Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, which is all about income-oriented investing, how to generate passive income from a diversified portfolio of high-yield funds to reach financial freedom as soon as possible. And speaking of high-yield funds, today we're going to do a deep dive into one of my personal favorite uh, high-yield monthly income ETF. It's one of my core positions, literally my second biggest position in my main portfolio. Of course, I am talking about HDIF here stock symbol HDIF, the Harvest Diversified Monthly Income ETF, uh, which is an all-in-one, or I like to call an all-in-one income-oriented solution. And I would like to thank Harvest Portfolios Group for uh, graciously sponsoring this video. It's much appreciated. So what are we going to check out or what are we going to cover in this video? Well, I'm going to do an overview of what HDIF actually is, what's inside of it, how it works, what kind of stocks and sectors you're getting exposure to. And it just celebrated its one year anniversary. So we'll take a little uh, peek at the performance data as well. One year later, we'll look at the MER, which has uh, been released after a year. So we know the management experience expense ratio and we'll do a deep dive into exactly what you're getting into if you're investing in HDIF. So let's get started. All right, so let's quickly review HDIF, the Harvest Diversified Monthly Income ETF. Of course, when we want the uh, you know correct information, you always got to go to the fund's website. And Harvest has a magnificent website where everything is laid out. It's brand new. It's It's been refreshed recently as well. So as you could see here, what's the point of HDIF? Reliable income, diverse growth opportunities. So it's this ETF has been built to deliver consistent monthly income. I love the sound of that. And diverse growth opportunities the Harvest ETFs are known for. So why does it say this? Well, HDIF is basically an ETF that holds six harvest covered call ETF. So it's literally an ETF that holds other ETFs. So it's an equal weighted one. So the six ETFs inside or approximately equal weighted basket of harvest equity income ETFs or covered call ETFs basically, and a multi-sector portfolio capturing a large and diverse set of high quality companies. And uh, my favorite part is always looking at the companies inside these funds. So that's what we're gonna do. And of course, in existing yields are combined with a covered call option or covered call strategy to generate income and and offset volatility. We know that anything that uses covered calls generates higher income and lowers volatility. So if we scroll down, we see the key facts here. So these are the key facts from March 8th, 2023. So very high yield of 10.50%, 10.5% yield based on the uh, market price of 809 here. And it's a big fund. It's been out a little over a year now. It's already at $285 million. So for a Canadian fund, it's you know, I would consider this a big success. After only one year, you see that the distributions are monthly, which is always appreciated, which is harvest signature uh, distribution, distribution frequency. The distributions, well, distributions right now are seven, a little over seven cents uh, per month. So um, if we look at the benefits here, it's a one-stop diversified core monthly income solution. I have to agree with that. And that's simply because of its great diversification, which is said, it says here, diversified across sectors and geographies as well. Exposure to powerful long-term growth trends. That's, you know, because they're big cap, good quality companies, consistent income yields at an 8.5% yield target. That's when it started, when the fund was launched, the target yield was 8.5. But now since the stock prices a lot lower than what it started at the yield is much higher at 10.5 modest leverage so this is an important thing to uh remember of h if it does use modest cash leverage uh 1.25 x so it means it's using 25 percent cash leverage it's taking out a loan facility to really enhance not only the yield of the fund right you're getting 25 percent more yield if you're adding 25 percent uh, more leverage, but you're also increasing the growth potential by 25%, but also the volatility and the downside potential as well by 25%. So just remember that. And um, if you're a little bit hesitant about leverage, stay tuned at the end of the video because we have a special announcement or, or Harvest announced uh, a basically a non-leverage version of HDIF that's coming out soon in case uh, you know, you don't want that 25% leverage. But honestly, I think it's a great idea. It's very modest. It's only 25%. And in my opinion, of course, there's nothing better than adding a bit of leverage for a long-term buy and hold investor, especially on something that generates uh, cash flow. Of course, this is a cover call strategy, right? The six ETFs inside of it, 
inside of HDIF, which we will investigate in detail. I'll use a cover call strategy, which of course enhances income and lowers volatility. That's what cover calls do. Zero management fee. So their HDIF has a zero management fee because inside of it, it's all harvest ETF. So the, um, you know, the fees are subject uh, of the underlying ETF. So of course the ETFs inside of it all have an MER, all have a fee. But in case you want to know what the total MER cost is of HDIF, if the number is out, if you just click on ETF facts, you see that the MER is currently 1.58%. So this includes all the MERs of the ETFs inside of it, which each have their own management fee and MERs. And why is it a little bit higher than, you know, I would say the average between the six ETFs inside of it are about 0.85 or, or approximately that MER. Well, it's because this includes leverage costs, guys, that 25% leverage. Uh, obviously, when Harvest borrows money, they got to pay you know, leverage expenses or interest. So that is why it is 1.58. This includes, I repeat, this includes leverage costs. So it includes all the management fees, the MERs, of the funds inside of it and the leverage expenses as well at 1.58%. Just remember that the 1.58%, this is... Uh, you know, net, the distributions are net of that fee. So it's not like you're paying anything out of your account. It's basically included uh, in the fund. So you could invest in this ETF in any of your registered or even non-registered account, your RSP, your RIF, RESP, TFSA, uh, et cetera. Remember, this is a Canadian holding. It's listed on the Canadian stock market. Um, the distribution frequency is monthly. You could drip it as well. Uh, that, of course, is, you know, you got to deal with your broker to get that dripped. And if we look at the distributions, it's very important that we take a look at the monthly distributions. In 2022, they've all been a little over seven cents, like we saw. And in 2023, it's the same thing. So you have the consistency and the reliability, typically, of the harvest covered call ETFs, which is very appreciated, you know, if you're, for example, living off this income because it's very, very reliable income. Of course, it's not guaranteed, but this is just an amalgam or a combination of the uh, distributions of the six ETFs inside of it. So let's take a look at what this portfolio or what, you know, what kind of stocks are you getting access to? What kind of sectors are you getting access to? The first thing I will notice and you will notice if you look at the sector breakdown is a magnificent diverse sector diversification. I mean, this is un undeniable. You have financials at 32%. You have technology 24, healthcare, very underrepresented in Canada. Same thing for technology. So a nice chunk in both of those. Communication services or telecom, 13 and a half. Utilities, very defensive, uh, along with healthcare, right? Very defensive companies at 13%. 10% in energy. I kind of like that it's only 10% of energy. I find it's not too little, but it's not too much. Energy is a very uh, a much higher risk or more volatile sector. You got some consumer staples and consumer discretionary, industrials, a little bit of real estate as well, and um, a little bit of materials as well. So very, very good diversification. You literally have all 11 sectors of the stock market. And in, in the holdings, I mean, this is an ETF that holds other ETFs. So here are, you know, it's approximately equal weighted. So investing in HDIF, guys, really means you're investing 21.3% in this ETF, 21.2% in HUBL etc etc so this is really the six etfs you're investing in and we need to investigate these one by one to see what you're actually in investing in when investing in hdif so let's do that exercise i love doing this so let's take a look at hhl the first etf of the six this is the harvest healthcare leaders income etf so this is a you know by far harvest's biggest and most popular covered call etf but almost 1.3 billion in net AUM and assets under management. So it's very, very big. And if we look at the distributions, I'm going to look at the distributions and the stocks for each one. It's been around since 2015, guys. And the dividend has been a little over, you know, 5.83 cents a month since 2015, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And the dividend has not changed at all which is just phenomenal consistency and reliability the name of the game for harvest so what you know what kind of companies are in hhl well healthcare leader so you could already start guessing these are all going to be 20 there's 20 companies in here big cat here it is i was looking for the number 20 big cat blue chip um, healthcare companies, which are predominantly in the United States. So, AbbVie, you'll recognize a lot of them, but it's not just biotech. Well, even 
um, well, um, sorted by sector here, it's also diversified within the healthcare uh, sector, which I like. So you have a bunch of pharmaceuticals, which will recognize a lot of them, right? Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer, Bristol-Myers, Merck, AstraZeneca. So all the big, big players you want to see. But there's also some, some life sciences tools and services companies as well, healthcare providers and healthcare equipment suppliers. So quite a bit with, with you know, Boston Scientific is a big one, Stryker. So not only, uh, you know, companies that are making you know doing research and pharmaceuticals but also uh, healthcare providers and equipment companies so a lot of nice diversification within the healthcare sector itself you see the breakdown here and as we know most of the biggest and best um, you know pharmaceutical companies or healthcare companies are in the United States so that is the overview of ETF number one uh, very defensive and very underrepresented underrepresented the healthcare um, sector in Canada. Next one is their brands ETF, another very popular one, almost 500 million AUM here. Uh, if we look at the distributions, so this one's a, this one has been around for a really long time. And here you see the, the monthly distribution, 5.42 cents, and they actually raised the dividend in starting in, let's see here, uh, in 2021. So at the end of 2021, they actually raised their dividend to six cents and it's been six cents a month ever since. So that's just a great example to show you that just because something is, you know, covered call solution, uh, it, it, it still holds a portfolio of stocks, which we're going to take a look at. And if the dividends keep growing, well, sometimes the managers are able to grow the dividend. So what kind of companies are in here in the, you know, best brands or brand leaders? Well, you're going to recognize all the companies, I promise you. So again, 20 companies here, all big cap, blue chip, you see the sector breakdown here and it, you know we'll, we'll separate it by sector again so you have apple let's just expand it here apple microsoft visa accenture intel so the big you know big technology companies uh very stable you know the apple microsoft have a dividend there's even visa which is great uh ups caterpillar united health group and johnson and johnson for healthcare so there is a little bit of overlap uh, between companies in this ETF and, for example, the tech ETF, which we're going to take a look at, or the healthcare uh, ETF, which we just take, you know, took a look at. JP Morgan and Chase Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, really the three biggest or three of the biggest financials in the U.S. There's Shell, there's Pepsi, Procter & Gamble, Nike, McDonald's, Walt Disney. So these are all companies that have very, very powerful brand power. So that is ETF number two. ETF number three is the technology one. So the tech achievers... A growth and income ETF. Again, this is another, you know, all six ETFs that we're going to take a look at. By the way, this is the third one. They're all covered call strategies and very nice high yield here. So if you look at the distributions, this one actually increased. It was a little, you know, again, 5.83 cents, 16, the same thing, 17, 18, 19. When did they raise it? They raised it. Let's see. That's not, that's a special 2021, I believe. Yeah. So in 2021, they raised it to seven cents so from 5.83 cents to seven cents and then they raised it again in 2022 to 10 cents and it's been 10 cents a month ever since so uh the, the reason is pretty simple technology companies and we will see the portfolio in a second here are very volatile so it you know vol um, volatility helps the covered call premiums it makes them really rich so that's why they were able to raise the dividend really really nice yield here and if we look at the holdings, this is going to be a you know all technology companies, but it's really the big the big ones, the blue chip ones that you would expect. So Apple, Microsoft, Oracle, Salesforce, Intuit. They make software, accounting software, Adobe, Nvidia. So even the a lot of chip makers, right? It's not just software companies. We've got all the chip makers, semiconductor companies like Nvidia, Qualcomm. Uh, Micron Technology, AMD, of course. You have some IT services like Visa and Accenture. I like that. Uh, of course, you have Google, you have Facebook, Keysight, Motorola. So just a nice mis mishmash of the top quality blue chip technology companies. Diversification, again, within the technology sector as well. Next one is the HUTL, the Equal Weight Global Utilities Income ETF. So just like HHL, very, very defensive sector. You know, utilities it's basically what powers our society. So um, that's exactly what it says here, right? And stability based on constant demand. Everyone needs their telecom. Everyone needs their uh, their electricity. So this one, I really like it. It has 
The distribution has not changed. It's been around since 2019, and the distribution is still 11.66 cents here. So what kind of companies? Well, this is actually 30 companies. Sorry about that. 30 companies here. So let's look at the portfolio. Here you have it, 30. So this one ha is really good diversification uh, within multiple geographies as well. So it's not only North America. There's also some stuff outside of North America. So, um, you know, you'll recognize a lot of the companies if we just... Um, you know, modify it and scroll down via sector. You do have some oil, gas, and consumable fuel companies. These are mostly pipeline companies like en Enbridge, Pembina, TC Energy, Kinner Morgan. So pipelines are typically part of the utility sector. Um, but you also have multi-utilities here. You have um, electric utilities. So these are pure power you know, corporations, you'll recognize the ones in Canada for sure, like Amera and Fortis are there, but there's also some popular ones in the US like like Duke. And you'll, you'll also get a lot of telecom companies, AT&T and Bell, uh, but also some really interesting ones, you know, in France, in Germany, in Switzerland, uh, Telus is here, Verizon. So really nice uh, mix of utility companies. So telecom, pipeline, and electricity companies all over the world. I really like this one. So this is ETF number four. ETF number five is US banks. So with this one has about 16, uh, 16 funds, sorry, 16 banks, 16 stocks. Distributions have stayed stable. Um, so they are 8.33 cents. And throughout the years, it hasn't changed. So very, very consistent. Once again, if we look at the portfolio, it's all the big US banks that you would expect to see. JP Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, et cetera, et cetera. So that is uh, ETF number five. I kind of like having U.S. banks in here because, you know, as a Canadian investor, we're typically invested in the Canadian banks, but the U.S. banks are very big and powerful as well, right? And last but definitely not least, this is the ETF they added, uh, you know, last in, in HDIF. This is the Harvest Canadian Equity Income Leaders ETF. So if you notice, a lot of the companies in the first couple of ETFs that we uh, looked at were American, but this is going to be an ETF that only holds Canadian companies, 30 of the biggest and best Canadian dividend stocks here. So, it, you know, this is a newer ETF. So it's only started in 2022, but distribution, again, very, very consistent. Let's look at the stocks in here. So 30 stocks and you're Canadian, right? Most probably if you're watching this, so you're going to have the typical Canadian uh, sector mix, which is very heavy in the financials, energy, utilities, telecom. But also a little bit of real estate in here, which I really like, a little bit of materials as well. So as we know, uh, Canada doesn't really have tech and healthcare, but it has a lot of financials, energy, materials, utilities. So You'll probably recognize all the companies here if we just sort it by sector. So in utilities, you know, you have Amera, Brookfield Renewable, Canadian Utilities, Forest. You have Rio Can and Choice, two big uh, REITs in Canada as well, which is really nice. A mining corporation, which has a nice dividend. I actually wasn't aware of this company, um, but it's a, a company that's you know, a mining company with a nice dividend. Of course, you're going to have a lot of financial. So all the big six banks are there. Life insurance companies are there. So you'll recognize pretty much all of these names here. And the they have quite a bit of energy and you really want to see always the same big boys in energy in Canada. And this is what you're going to see here. Canadian Natural and Suncor, the biggest oil producers. You have, of course, Whitecap is another oil producer. It's not, not as big as these two, but another big oil producer. Kiara, Pembina, TC Energy, Enbridge. So again, the pipelines in there are in there. Uh, for telecom, you'll get Te Bell, Telus and Quebecor. I thought that was a nice, uh, a nice, you know, usually you don't see that one, but I think it's a good idea to always get some more diverse, diversification, Canadian Tire as well. So there is basically the, you know, an analysis, an in-depth analysis of the six ETFs within HDIF. So remember, if, when you're investing in HDIF, guys, you're literally investing 21% in HLIF, which was the last one we reviewed, 21% in HUBL, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And on top of that, on top of you know, the exposure to these, you're getting 25% leverage. And that is why, you know, once you add all these up, you'll notice that it's over, uh, it's about 125%. So that's because of the leverage, right? So really nice and consistent monthly income. That is really the fact, uh, you know, that is really the, sorry, not the fact, but the mission and the purpose of HDIF. It's one of my personal 
uh, core holdings. It's the second biggest holding right now, and it's just providing a consistent source of monthly income. It's pretty much designed for people who require high monthly, reliable and consistent monthly income. So it's very popular with the retirees, for example. But hey, I'm 37 years old and I love it. If you want to read more about it, you could always click on Investor Brochure. They have a really nice brochure here, which you, you could read through. Uh, it's really, you know, pretty much summarizes what I've shown you here. You could also watch this short clip um, with Michael Kovacs, the CEO, where he, you know, describes what HDIF is designed for, who it's designed for, and how it really works. Um, so to view that video, you just go on HDIF's main page, you scroll down, and this is the, you just click on read more, and that's where you'll get this little video you hit play. So all in all, guys, I think this is a, I'll give you my final thoughts now. So before I give you my final thoughts on HDIF, let's take a look at the one year performance because the performance numbers always come out after one year. So it's been uh, you know, a little over a year that this fund has come out. So if you look at the annualized performance, of course, we know that 2022 is a really bad month. So you got to take this with a grain of salt, of course. But the last one year, and this is as of the end of February, so very, very updated, minus 8.79%. Uh, which you know kind of looks bad, but let's compare that to VSP, the Vanguard S&P 500 Canadian hedged, and I'm comparing it with VSP and not VFV because HDIF, the ETFs inside of it are Canadian hedged. So VSP in the last year is minus 9.19. So HDIF is actually beating VSP. It's beating the uh, S&P 500. You see year to date, uh, which is just you know two months, 3.84%. And the VSP is 3.37%. So HDIF's performance has been nothing but uh, great because anytime you're beating the S&P 500, it's very, very impressive. That's pretty much the holy grail. So think about that. It's beating the S&P 500. I know it's still early. It's only been a year. But just the fact that it's beating it after a year and also year to date with a management fee or an MER that's much, much higher is very, very impressive. And of course, annual performances, of course, we know includes the income. It's as if you're re reinvesting the monthly income. Uh, so another thing to remember, guys, don't look at the stock price of HDIF. You have to look at the total return, right? Because it's an income-oriented fund. You're not gonna see much or just looking at the stock price. You gotta look at the total return, which is right here, annualized performance. And right now, currently, I am filming this on March 9th, and this performance is as of end of February, just last week or two weeks ago. It is currently doing better than VSP or the S&P 500. Very impressive. So my final thoughts on HDIF is I really, really like it. It's really designed to provide a consistent source of monthly income. It's a one-stop shop or an all-in-one covered call solution with 25% leverage, which is in my opinion, great for long-term buy and hold investors because you really get that yield boosted and the growth potential over time. And if you're just buying and holding it like I am, I'm okay personally with 25% more volatility because that's what you're going to get. You're going to get higher yield and higher total returns over time, but you're also going to get 25% more volatility uh, with the stock price. But since it's really, really diversified, like we saw, we saw the breakdown. You got the healthcare, you got the technology, you got the utilities, you got the U.S. banks, you got that Canadian ETF, the big brands. I mean, it's really, really extremely well diversified. I think diversification always lowers your risk. Plus, you know, there, there are six covered call ETFs. Uh, which, you know, anytime you add cover calls to anything, you do lower your, your, your risk as well. You lower your volatility. So I think it's a phenomenal ETF, a really one-stop shop. And in case you guys are a little bit hesitant because of that leverage, you, you feel like maybe you would want, you would like the product, but you're, you're a bit hesitant because of the leverage. I got great news for you. Harvest just announced that they are basically coming out with a non-leveraged version of HDIF. So it's going to be called the Diversified Equity Income ETF. You could check it out on their website. You just go to media press press releases and you'll see that there. So the stock symbol instead of HDIF is going to be HRIF, H-R-I-F, and it's pretty much going to be the same thing without the 25% leverage. So you, you, you're you going to expect 25% less yield right, than HDIF, but uh, not as much volatility 
of course. So that's another great option, which, you know, they just filed the prospectus for it. And usually it comes out a, a month or two later. So I can't give you a target date for when that ETF is going to come out, but uh, stay tuned for that in case you want the non-leveraged version. So I absolutely love this ETF. I own it myself and it just pays me monthly. I'm just going to buy and hold it forever. It's a great way to supplement your income. And as we know, everybody needs income. It's also a great way to fight inflation, right? Because if you're getting over 10% yield, right there, you're beating inflation, which is very important nowadays. I know inflation, you know, is a big deal and it's been in the news lately. So this is also a great inflation fighter. And you'll see that laid out in the brochure as well. So I encourage you, if you're still hesitant to read the material, read the brochure, read all about HDIF, you know, analyze the stocks even in more detail if you want, but you're really getting access to about 120, something like that. Big cap blue chip stocks, uh, mostly in North America, mostly in the US, but all sectors, all 11 sectors of the stock market is uh, represented in HDIF. So I strongly suggest you, you take a look at HDIF if you haven't already invested in it. If you're an income oriented investor and generating high monthly income is important for you. Hey, don't go yet. I have some important reminders, including some more recent ones, and I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. And for everything that I'm about to discuss, the links in, in, and info are in the video description below. So first of all, if you didn't know yet, I do offer a one-on-one -on -one coaching session where you'll have a one-hour Zoom call with me where you could ask me all the questions you want, and I'll help you and assist you best I can. Just remember that I'm not, not a licensed or registered financial advisor or planner. So to book a session, go on my website, passiveincomeinvesting.ca, and write Right there on the home page on the left hand side there is a small video watch that video to know how to book a one-on-one -on -one properly with yours truly also on my website you could purchase my digital product the ultimate diy investing package which is on version 4 right now it comes with lifetime updates so you only have to buy it once and this is really a reference tool or a companion tool to help you build your own portfolio according to your needs and your objectives it has a list of funds it has sample portfolios for both canadian investors and American investors so make sure to check it out uh, on my website I actually created a video which uh, shows the product from A to Z because I don't want you to spend money unless you know exactly what you're getting so make sure to check that video out on my website and don't take my word for how good it is check out the reviews there's over 300 of them and they are all 100% real reviews so here's some more um, updated news or recent news I am now on Blossom a new investing app designed for investors I've been using it for a few weeks now I think it's really really great it has a really cool feature where users could actually add and share their portfolios and what they're buying and selling every day so you could actually link your investing account so it's updated automatically on a daily basis i recently added my own main portfolio so you could follow how my portfolio is doing live and what i buy every month really really cool it's like a mix of Facebook and Twitter, but specifically for investing. So get on your phone, click on the link in the video description below and download the app. It's 100% free. So you two could share your portfolio. Just remember to look for me and follow me. My username is Adrian PII altogether. Also, I do have a referral link for Quest Trade. So you could get $50 uh, worth of free stock purchases. This is the Canadian discount broker that I use and I recommend. Unlike Wealthsimple, the other popular discount broker in Canada you uh, you could drip everything you want it has all the stocks and it also has dual currency accounts very very uh, convenient if you're buying both Canadian stocks and American stocks I have a quest trade video by the way which shows gives you a little tour uh, of the fe features so make sure to check that out i also have a referral link for passive this is the portfolio tracking tool that i use to consolidate all our accounts to get a nice bird's eye view so you could cons for you know consolidate all the inf information together for easy tracking and stats as well also our facebook group Passive Income Investing is now an invite-only private group. So to join it, you need to click, click on, the, on the link in the video description below and give the group a like to get invited. So we take pride in making this one of the best investing Facebook groups out there with over 13,000 members. There's no scams. There's no spammers. And negative and doomsday people we kick them out right away. Also, follow us on Instagram if you want a little bit more of our personal journey here in Panama. And lastly, just remember everyone, I am not a licensed 
or registered financial advisor. This channel is all about my personal investing journey and how I invest to generate high passive income from a diversified portfolio of high yield funds. It's for educational purposes only. So don't forget to do your own research and due diligence. And of course, stay safe, everyone. Stay healthy. And of course, stay passive. See you next time.